Yo, what up, what's poppin'? It's me, Josh Otusanya, here again. In this video, we're gonna talk about what determines what we become. Now, if you ask me personally, there's a lot of different factors that determine what we become in life. So here are a few. Number one, your openness to evolve. Now, are you a person with a strong openness to change? Like, I'll, I'll tell you straight up, like, I'm someone who, I can be mad impressionable. Like, if you come up with something captivating enough, moving enough, you got enough evidence and everything, I'm like, yo, how do I implement this into my life quickly? That's why I've tried so many things. Like, that's how I started trying veganism because I had a friend who was doing it, show me all this stuff, saw a few documentaries. I was like, oh, snap. I'm gonna try it. Or I might see a movie that just really resonates with me. I'm like, oh snap, we gotta implement the movie into my life. The flip side, right, you might be someone with a more rigid personality, meaning your ability to change will be limited. You're kind of set in your ways. Next, your formative years, these are crucial too. Because look, your social and psychological health is largely influenced during this time period. For example, some of the greatest musicians of all time, Beethoven, Bieber. Yo, Bieber's a good musician, right? Great musician, but a lot of these musicians are even pro athletes or, or greatest you know, people that this world has ever seen, they got involved in their craft at a very young age. They got exposed to it to a very young age. Some of these people started playing basketball when they're like five, like the second they could walk. You know, some of these musicians started playing around with music when they were like three, when they were four. So those years that you get in, uh, exposed to are crucial. And if I remember correctly, the reason is because when you're younger, you have a lot of uh, open like neural pathways, so to speak, in your brain. And when you're a kid, when you're born, your brain is trying to figure out, okay, which pathways do I need for survival? So whatever you're exposed to the most during those early years, your brain will strengthen those connections in the brain because it's saying, oh, I'm gonna need this later in life to survive. So when you really expose yourself to music or you really expose yourself to like certain physical like coordination stuff or whatever like those pathways are going to be stronger and whatever you don't really use it kind of like fizzles away now I, I gotta find i'm gonna try to find an article on that and put it in, in the description but it was back when i was really into psychology and i would i would do a lot of studying on like the brain and, and environment nature versus nurture all this crazy stuff next your parents mom and dad this is also kind of related to your formative years but your parents are some of the first people who help you know, help you build up your self-esteem your your self-belief your self-identity I've talked about this in an old, old uh, YouTube video that I re uh, recorded, but there was a, I saw, I was watching Oprah. It was either Oprah or, it was one of those talk shows, but there was a gorgeous woman on that show. Gorgeous, okay? Beautiful. And she believed that she was hideous. Like, she legit thought she was the ugliest woman alive. She had no self-esteem. And the reason is because as she was growing up, from, since she was a little girl all the way into her, her adulthood, her mom told her like every single day that she was ugly, that she was hideous, that she was horrible, that no one would ever find her attractive every day. And that just became as a part of her self-identity. She just identified as an ugly woman. So it was crazy because everyone in the audience and everyone was just like, yo, this is a beautiful woman. Last point, your social circle. This is huge. All right, your social circle will have a huge impact on who you become in life. Now, it's a very popular phrase out there, but it's the idea that you become like the five or so people you hang out with the most, and that is very true. That is very, very true. So if you have a lot of goals, a lot of dreams, a lot of ambitions, you could legitimately sabotage your life by hanging out with people with no dreams, no goals, no ambitions, and they're very negative. Even on just a smaller scale, I mean, when you hang out with certain people so much, You'll, you'll notice that group of people, like your friend, your friend group, you, you tend to make similar jokes. You tend to laugh at the same things. You, you develop this like community tribe-like way of speaking, way of communicating, and you're all s sort of similar with one another. The comment section down below, let me know what has influenced you the most in becoming the person you are today. Thank you for watching. For more videos, click over here. Stop wasting time. Just click there immediately. You don't even need to hear me keep talking, do you? Just, just keep, keep clicking. Click, click, just click on that, click, click. Now, first glance, creation and destruction are like two different sides of the spectrum. In my opinion, I think they're the same and they actually work together. Like, look, my parents 